Hi, this is Saad from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be going over all trooper types that were included in Rogue One A Star Wars Story, but I will be excluding the regular stormtroopers because we already seen them before numerous times in the original trilogy, Star Wars Rebels, and many other books, comics, and games. So that means we're only going to be going over the troopers that were specifically designed for Rogue One and not seen before. Also, We'll be going over some simple reasons why we haven't seen any of them in the original trilogy and how they fit in. Anyway, let's begin. At number 1, we have the Death Troopers, who were an elite variant of the Galactic Empire's Stormtroopers that were a part of the Empire's Imperial Intelligence. They served as protective details and bodyguards for important Imperial officers. They wore black suits of armor and specialized helmets that scrambled verbal communications. Death Troopers were trained in unarmed combat, heavy weapons, and sniping. Specializing in commando missions, the troopers were experts at covering their tracks, leaving little evidence of their missions. They were named after a legendary advanced weapons research project to revive necrotic tissue, which resulted in the creation of uncontrollable undead troopers. Stormtrooper candidates who excelled at their training were reassigned to the advanced Death Trooper camp on Scarif. They were required to exceed traditional stormtrooper standards, including height and weight. Death troopers were also subjected to classified surgical enhancements, making them beyond human. Their training was more rigorous than of a standard stormtrooper. They were mostly assigned to small groups, with each trooper specializing in a specific skill set. In 13 BBY, a squad of death troopers accompanied Director Krennic to Lamu. There, they took Galen Urso to complete his work on the Death Star. One of the Death Troopers killed Urso's wife, Lyra, and the squad attempted to find Galen's daughter, Jin Urso, but with no success. During the early rebellion, a squad was under the command of Grand Admiral Thrawn in his campaign against the rebel cells near Lothal. Death Troopers continued to protect Krennic during the Death Star's initial testing stage at Jeddah and Idu. They were present at the Battle of Scarif where all of Krennic's protection squad was wiped out shortly before Krennic's death. It shouldn't be a surprise that there were only a few Death Troopers because after all, the Empire's strategy is quantity over quality. The reason why we never saw them before in the original trilogy is because we didn't get a chance to see important Imperials on their own, and the story was not based on them, but the main characters such as Darth Vader and so on. Although, we got to see the conference room in the Death Star where they could have been, but I'm just gonna assume that if they were there, they were on the outside of the room guarding it, or there was simply no need for them because the Death Star was fully secure. But on the other hand we have Krennic, who had them with him at all time, which might be because he was constantly threatened even within Imperial ranks, or that they were a part of his unorthodox style, just as was his shuttle and blaster. At number 2, we have Coastal Defender Stormtroopers, who were more commonly known as Shore Troopers and were a specialized variant of the standard Stormtroopers trained and equipped for combat in tropical environments. They were stationed at the Top Seeker Imperial Security Complex on the tropical planet of Scarif, where they patrolled the beaches and bunkers of the facility. They also monitored a steady stream of cargo transport traffic. While on Scarif, they never expected to be in combat situations due to the planetary shield, but nonetheless, they were well trained and ready. Shore troopers were extremely rare due to the specific environment in which they were stationed. All shore troopers operated at a rank of a sergeant at least, and outranked standard stormtroopers. There were at least three distinct ranks of shore troopers, all with unique armor markings. Regular shore troopers featured a red band around their right arm and a white strap on their left, while squad leaders were identified by a sand blue stripe that went along the top of their chest plates and onto their shoulder armor. The highest known rank of the shore troopers is the captain who was recognized by his chest armor, which was mostly sand blue, alongside his left arm. The reason why we never saw them before in the original trilogy is pretty simple, and that is because there were no beach environments, but when you look at it that way, they could have been used instead of the sand troopers in Tatooine, or the other way around. But all in all, they are very rarely seen, and that is good enough because they're awesome. At number 3, we have the Imperial Combat Assault Tank Pilots, otherwise called Tank Troopers. Under Imperial occupation, the streets of Jeddah were patrolled by Imperial Combat Assault tanks, which were operated by two pilots and a commander. The tank troopers had exactly the same armor as the shore troopers, and the only differences were the helmets and the colors. 
The only two known ranks were the regular combat assault pilots, who were plainly white, and the combat assault tank commanders, who were recognized by the dark grey stripe that went along the top of their chest armor and onto their shoulder pads. These tank troopers, alongside the hover tank, could have been seen in most Eisley, but there were no insurgencies there, like there was in Jeddah, thanks to Saw Gerrera's partisans. And when you look at it, Jeddah was the perfect place for the hover tank because of its great maneuverability in tight quarters and firepower. So yet again, there were no environments in the original trilogy that required these kind of tanks and their pilots. And now finally at number 4, we have more of an honorable mention and that is the Imperial ground crew, otherwise known as Imperial technicians, which were also new to Rogue One. They are an honorable mention due to the fact that they are not any type of troopers. Imperial ground crew members were personnel who ensure the smooth landing and operation of Imperial craft through regular maintenance at space-bound and ground-based Imperial installations. So this means that these guys are basically needed everywhere, yet in the original trilogy you can't see them anywhere, but we simply know that they are there, but off-screen. But at least the rebel ground crew was seen in A New Hope. Anyway guys, this is it on the video, and we hope you all enjoyed it and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you want to watch more videos like this one, the link to the playlist of our other Star Wars videos will be in the description down below. And if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for even more videos like this one. And remember guys, God is awesome, may the force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video. You rebel scum. This party's over.